Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video, it's our second in our series, uh, using solid body parts and assembly design. What I'd like to show you is a couple models, uh, right now the, the coupler model, that uh, uses this concept. So what we have here is an assembly, and uh, the way a coupler works, and this is a railroad uh, car coupler, uh, this is designed to, uh, you know, engage cars, to couple cars together so you can uh, assemble a train. But it's also designed to keep people from having to walk in between cars. So there's a lot of levers that are associated with this that allow somebody to uh, uncouple and couple cars by standing on the outside of the car. So the way it works is you have a knuckle that moves back and forth and it rotates around that uh, connects with a coupler from uh, another train. And uh, kind of look at the inside and look at some of the components associated with this. What you have in here are, uh, you know, initially you have the knuckle out front. You have a thrower, which is this red element in the back, and I'll show you that in a little bit more detail later, but you also have a lock. This lock comes down and gets in front of the couple over here, which keeps that from uh, rotating, and allows it to stay coupled when the car is together. And you have some linkages over here, which are connected to a rod, which on the outside of the car gives uh, the brakeman or the conductor the opportunity to uh, couple or uncouple the car. So, with that said, one thing that's notable over here is that uh, we have one assembly over here, but we have one part associated with that assembly. If we were to expand this out a little bit, you notice that that one part has got a couple different configurations with it. You have the body, you have the knuckle, you have the lock, you have the thrower. All of these are configurations within that part which have been developed using the solid body part method in assembly design. So, let's go through our PowerPoint a little bit. Some of the advantages of this, of using a solid body uh, parts and assembly design, is that it provides a one-stop shopping experience. And we'll get into this here in just a moment, but uh, most of your generalized model geometry are combined with the design sketches, which can be easily found on top of your uh, part file feature manager design tree. Another advantage is, is that uh, with these design sketches, it's easy to visualize sketch geometry, and if there's any potential conflicts, they are usually uh, fairly easy to, to modify. And assemblies are easy with lots of shared geometry, and you can insert as few as just one part, like with a coupler design. There is one part in there with a variety of different uh, configurations. And if there's one thing to keep in mind when you're doing all this modeling, is that once there is one simple rule out there, is that you have one sketch to rule them all, to borrow from uh, the Lord of the Rings. One sketch to find them, one sketch to bring them all, and in darkness find them. Yeah, I don't know about the rest of that, but definitely the one sketch to rule them all is, uh, is something you're going to develop when you put together your solid bodies. Uh, there's going to be one sketch, or maybe a number of different sketches on top of your future manager design tree, which are going to influence all the features that come after that. And that's, uh, that's a real big advantage. So in regard to the coupler model, uh, the coupler model, uh, we're going to start with the three primary planes, the front, top, and the right plane. And on those planes, we're going to establish a design sketch. Uh, I call them a design sketch. I know other modelers uh, call them something different. But in each of these planes, uh, with the sketches, you're going to be using a plane that has the most detail first. So what you, want, what you need to do is think carefully about your model. Uh, because the first sketch in this form will drive the sketch elements of the two remaining or the multiple remaining design sketches and uh, the features that follow that. So typically what I do with the, with the knuckles, I started with the top sketch, as you can see in the, the image in the background back here, and there's a drawing that's associated with that, I put uh, a lot of my geometry in that top sketch. Once I got done with the top sketch, I did a right sketch, which, ha which has the geometry of this, part of that sketch over here too, uh, that drawing that's in the background. And I want to make sure that the sketch, the sketch elements uh, kind of uh, you know, are associated with each other uh, directly. So you want to make sure that uh, when the end of the coupler body is uh, being shown over here, that it's also associated with the edge of the body over here in that same drawing. So let's go ahead and look at our model. We can go ahead and open up one of these parts. It's all the same part, but one of the configurations of that part. And we'll go to the, to the body of that part. And uh, we can look at the, the design sketches associated with this, with, this, um, with this configuration. So when I talk about establishing a design sketch, uh, what I use was the top sketch first. If we were to go into that, and there's a lot of uh, dimensions and uh, sketch relations in here, and yes, we're going to turn those off. You can see it's a big black mass, but there's a lot of geometry in here, not only with the body of the, of the coupler, but also with the knuckler, uh, knuckle, and some of the other uh, components and uh, configurations in that model, too, are all in there. So it looks really complicated. 
But you'll also notice that this is very top end oriented. I'm putting a lot of my design features into this one sketch, and from that sketch, I'm going to borrow from that sketch to create all the features that are going to follow that. So from that, from the top uh, sketch, I have my body right sketch. And you can see what that looks like. Uh, not quite as complicated, but uh, still fairly complicated. But there are associations, as I showed you, with, uh, with the locomotive between the top sketch and the right sketch. If you were to turn these on, you could probably see these a little bit better. So you can see that some of the elements on the top are associated with some of the elements inside. You can enhance that by putting in these center lines to extend some of this geometry so they can be intersected by the other sketches that you're trying to make associations to. So back to our PowerPoint. The next bullet point is an opportunity to use a sketch picture to quickly capture sketch geometry. I'm not going to go into that with a lot of detail now, but each one of these sketches over here does have sketch pictures associated with it. So, hmm. You know, my operating system just crashed yesterday, so it's all works 2014, which I also just reloaded. It's been a little bit on, if you don't mind me saying so, on the sketchy side. So if this thing crashes, we'll have to stop the video and we'll pick it up in the, on the next video. But let's uh, take a look at some of these sketch pictures. If I unspress uh, that sketch picture on the on the top sketch, it actually shows you that drawing that's uh, in the background. This drawing uh, comes out of a car encyclopedia, showing uh, some uh, basic uh, scup uh, uh, coupler uh, form and uh, dimensions. So once you put that on top, you have the ability to sketch right on top of that, put in uh, the associated uh, sketch relations and dimensions to better define your uh, sketch model here. So that's uh, that sketch picture and how that works, and I'll cover that in uh, different videos. When it comes back to the the coupler model, once all the sketches have been drawn, use as many sketches as necessary to best outline your model. Begin to model based on these sketches only, and not on other bodies created. In other words, uh, always make references to these sketches in your in your model, and not to uh, other uh, features of different. Uh, 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 different bodies. Once you do that, once you make that relationship in there, it's going to be hard to create configurations and suppress those features because they're going to be related to each other. So when you go ahead and uh, rebuild, we're going to go ahead and rebuild this model and go ahead and hide that. When you do like the body, maybe the basic feature in the body, which is going to be the shank base, once you uh, create that uh, feature and the sketch is associated with that feature, uh, we don't have to turn it on, but there's an on-edge relationship between these lines and the lines of the, of the top sketch that's on top of our feature manager design tree. So you want to make sure that all the relationships you have and all these features in here refer to either each other, the other features within that uh, folder, or uh, to the various sketches associated with the top of the feature manager design tree, the, the design sketches as I call them. So when each solid body is modeled, Model uh, organize all the features for the uh, solid body into one folder and, descriptive, and descriptively rename that folder. So with all these features in here, and I'll go back to my model which shows you everything that's associated with, uh, um, uh, with our part here. These are all the different configura configurations of our part and just for simplicity I'm going to go ahead and turn off some of these sketches. If we go back to our Feature Manager Design Tree, everything that's associated with these different parts are inside these folders. So I have my body folder, my knuckle folder, my thrower folder, lock folder, and so on and so forth. That's the first bit of organization here. You want to make sure when you put this stuff together, you remain organized in three different areas. And that first area is going to be uh, creating these folders. So once you have all those features in that folder, and let's go ahead and look at our body folder, you can see there's a lot of features in, in this body folder and they're all related to the body of the, of the coupler. Uh, the next element in here is also rename your uh, solid body and the solid body's folder uh, to something as descriptive of what it is. Typically when you look at your solid body's folder it's going to have names of uh, something that uh, may not be necessarily perfectly referenced to that part. For instance we have a name here called Cuttick Street 14 which I believe is in the lock. What it's doing here is it's uh, borrowing the last bit of geometry associated with that body and uh, calling it that. So it's, this is where cut extrude 14 comes from. What we really want to do is rename that. And of course, when you rename elements in here, 
No, you simply just slowly click on it twice and it gives you the ability to rename it. I usually put the name body in here because if you call it the lock, there's probably some other feature in here also called the lock, and it'll uh, kind of throw that off. So we're going to call that the lock body. There's some other elements in here too that need to be cleaned up, but uh, I think you have the gist of that and you want to make sure you rename your body folder. Uh, the third element in here that you want to be organized with is you want to make sure you isolate the solid body folder, which uh, you know, it's considered like a separate part within a part in this demonstration. So when you're talking about configurations in your solid body uh, model here, the diff different configurations imply that you have a part within a part. In other words, we have a knuckle part, we have a body part, we have a thrower part within the coupler, uh, coupler parts uh, part that we have. So then, once you do that, when you've got these things isolated into the different folders, you've renamed your bodies, comes the third element, and that is creating a new configuration, new configuration manager, suppressing all the appropriate folders in the feature manager design tree to hide what you don't need or suppress what you don't need. So to look at that, if you go to our configuration manager, these are all of our configurations. We have our body configuration, our knuckle configuration, our lock configuration, and all these of course, if you're not quick enough, it's going to try to rename them. So these are all our configurations. All these configurations are associated with the different folders in here. And when you have these all organized in different folders and properly named, all you have to do when you create that different configuration is suppress all the folders you don't need and uh, highlight and unsuppress the folder that you do need. So for here, even though uh, all the elements of, that, uh, of these other folders are already suppressed, we can still suppress that folder. It shouldn't affect the model, and it might be easier to follow that too. So the only thing we should have here that shows being unsuppressed is the thrower folder. So back to our PowerPoint, just to wrap up this video, uh, you want to make sure that uh, the three elements when you're doing your solid body uh, modeling are covered here. And those elements include, and we're going to go back to our model uh, configuration here, which shows everything. You want to make sure that everything's organized in different folders, that all of the features associated with a particular configuration you're going to create is in a folder that can be easily found. You want to make sure that your solid bodies are also renamed to better reflect and uh, describe uh, you know, the body that it's actually describing here. And then uh, your configurations are going to be very specific to that body that you want to have uh, in, uh, incorporated into your uh, assembly. So it's these configurations that you're going to insert into an assembly. And uh, it's important that you get those organized and well named so when you put them in the assembly you can easily follow them. So I think that's enough for this video. In the next video we're going to cover another simple model or a simpler model called the crane and we'll go through a little bit more detail in regard to the modeling of solid body parts and assembly design.